on episode 443 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet David E. Frost and discuss his book, Kaboomer, Thriving and Striving into Your 90s. You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 443. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness? The 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. Finally, a program that helps grown-ups just like you lose a size in 30 days, guaranteed. I'm relaunching the Lose a Size Challenge we did back in October. It was hugely successful and helped so many people that I knew I had to bring it back. Now, unlike most of the challenges we've done on 40 Plus Fitness, this one focused on a specific outcome. You will drop a size in 30 days. I guarantee it. But beyond just feeling more comfortable in your clothes, you're going to look and feel better. You're going to have more energy. You're going to have confidence that you didn't have before, and you're going to stop chasing those diet and exercise fads that never seem to work. This one does. Go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash lose. That's L-O-S-E, 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash lose, and sign up for the Lose a Size Challenge today. I guarantee If you do exactly as I'm asking you to do in this program, you will lose a size in 30 days or I'll give you your money back. Go check it out, 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash lose. Our guest today is an NFPT certified master fitness trainer, a rowing coach, champion competitor, and award-winning adjunct professor. After decorated careers in the U.S. Navy and the business world, he founded Well Past 40 to promote wellness and longevity. He specializes in nutrition, endurance, and strength training, adapting sessions for people dealing with cancer, MS, PD, CP, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. With no further ado, here's David E. Frost. David, welcome to 40 Plus Fitness. Well, thanks so much, Alan, and and golly, here we are the first Friday of a crazy summer. So So golly, that that definitely puts you in the boomer category, using that word. Uh, (laughs) So your book is called Kaboomer, Thriving and Striving into Your 90s. And uh, I really like that concept because I think, um, you know, I want to say, you know, when when we were growing up, you know, 30 was old, 40 was old. And, you know, we were all just going to die at 65. So I don't even know why Social Security exists because we'll just die the day after we are eligible, but uh, living into your 90s is really not really the goal, but it's it's just so possible uh, and, and so believable now because more and more people, we see them living good lives, doing the right things, and living well in and past the 90s. Uh, true, uh, and some of that's technology, some of it's lifestyle, and uh, we're blessed to be in the age where uh, average you know, statistical life expectancy is growing. Um, but then, of course, uh, some of us, like you and I, think that living better is the other side of the coin, where not only do we want more de- uh, circles around the, the sun, but we'd like them to be good circles. Yeah. One one of the things I like to say is I want to be able to wipe my own butt when I'm 105. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and, and if you do, some of that might be uh, the blessings of having uh, good genes in your makeup. Um, but a lot of it, I think we can control as well. And, and certainly thriving and striving and being fit past 40 or 40 plus fit, excuse me, are things that uh, uh, resonate with me and maybe some others will too. Yes, yes. Now you talked about lifestyle and I want to get into that because this is what we're, really what, we're, what this is all about. It's, it's the things that are in our control. As you, as you mentioned, there, there are some genetic factors uh, of how long we're going to live, but it makes up a a percentage, we'll just say a lower percentage, and we'll just leave it at that. But as far as lifestyle goes, in in the book, you list seven elements of a long and healthy life. Can you can you go through those seven elements? Love to. And uh, I'm a simple guy. So I I picked the letter S, uh, it seemed to fit. So the seven elements, Alan, that uh, you did you did uh, mentioned are strength, which can't wait, 
Um, and we know that one of the greatest things about resistance is it can help us in so many ways, whether it's insulin sensitivity, uh, metabolism, uh, lean skeletal muscle, all those sorts of things. So strength is one of the ones. If we go back to the Greek philosophers that talked about uh, brandishing weights and the sinews of their shoulders, this is not a new idea that resistance exercise is really good for us. And we also have learned, as you mentioned, uh, we're blessed to have um, more research than our forebears did, uh, that uh, we can continue to, it's hard, <laughs> we know past 40, uh, it's hard, uh, but we can, uh, uh, we know uh, that smart people have said that we can continue to build muscle into our 80s. So that kind of is a little bit of a springboard to those uh, blowing out those 90 candles that you mentioned. So that's strength. Uh, I believe that the bedrock is stamina uh, for staying alive. Uh, we're living, breathing organisms, and motion is medicine. So stamina, meaning get, uh, moving to sweat uh, almost every day of the week, is, is absolutely critical uh, for our vitality. Helps us sleep better. Helps our, uh, we eat better because our body knows what it should be eating instead of what's available on the shelf. Uh, so um, I, in my model, I call stamina the bedrock for staying alive. Then uh, <laughs> the capstone, believe it or not, I wish we folks like you and I that are in the uh, personal training business think that um, we'd love to claim that we're more responsible for lifestyle than we are. But uh, sleep uh, is the capstone in my model. So that's the third S, restorative, restful sleep so our brains can do their magic and we can recover, uh, particularly for those of us that are a little bit older and do take a little longer to recover from our stamina or our strength work. So that's our capstone. Uh, I'd like to highlight one that's a takeaway. Um, it's, it's a thief, stress. Your stress is good if uh, a great white shark is chasing you uh, or chasing me in the, in the shallows of the ocean, uh, but stress is not good if it becomes chronic. So that's the takeaway, the thief in my physical 401k model. Uh, a couple others, anti-aging sustenance. That's really the currency in my physical 401k. Uh, if we eat the colors of the rainbow, I, I describe it as vitamin P because I can't remember all those vitamins very well, uh, but I call vitamin P the collection of wonderful, um, uh, some ma macronutrients, but mostly micronutrients that make our uh, organisms what they are. Uh, and then we have some minerals that we can hopefully uh, absorb as well to keep us vital, grow muscles, uh, brain health, all those sorts of good things. So, um, the uh, anti-aging food is really, to me, the currency of our, our 401k. And two additional ones, um, the flexible account part of our physical bank is, is uh, stretching. Um, in, in the book, I, uh, one, uh, one person I respect talked about oiling up the tin man. If our joints are not limber, if our connective tissue is not doing what it's supposed to do, we tend to hunker down um, and not um, be, you know, we lose height as we get older because that happens, but why not keep the, uh, why not keep the limbs oiled up so that we can move, play with the grandkids and, and enjoy life. And then uh, the last item is our, our accident insurance, which is stability. Stability is so important, starting with the great toes, um, one of the measures of longevity, <laughs> wish I could claim credit for this, I can't, and we, we all can get better at this, um, just uh, um, screw one foot into the ground, raise the other foot off the ground, close your eyes and see if you can, at my age, if I can uh, stay erect and not topple over with my eyes closed, one foot on the ground for 20 seconds, that's a, that's a great indicator of longevity. And uh, if we do believe, like I do, that some of longevity is what we can control, that's a simple yet hard thing to do. So strength, stability, stamina, stress, stretching, stress not because that's a thief, uh, restorative sleep, and sustenance. Did I hit seven? I yes. know it's a long list, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a long list. Yeah. And, and, you know, the, the interesting thing about all seven of those is that they are, they are all generally interrelated. Uh, you know, if you're um, if you're not eating well, you may not be sleeping well. If you're stressed, uh, you may not be uh, eating well or sleeping well, um, and your body's not going to want to put on muscle. 
uh, when you're lifting, trying to do your strength work. Uh, and you just may not have the energy and stamina to do the things you want to do. So everything's interrelated and we have to take care of really all seven of those elements if we really want to live a long and healthy life. I want to talk about a few of them, though, a couple of them, I guess, uh, because we really don't have enough time to go into all seven. Um, and one of the core ones, and you kind of put this in the front because you, you consider this one of, if not the most important to at least make sure you're working on on a daily basis, um, and that's stamina. Can you talk a little bit about how you define stamina um, and then how we can build stamina as a healthy habit? Uh, thanks so much, Alan. Uh, stamina to me, uh, my layman or trainer's uh, definition is stamina is your ability to be active or to do work or to exercise to a period where you sweat. And uh, by sweating, you, your bodies do some amazing things uh, to, um, uh, to, you know, you hear the phrase, uh, uh, no pain, no gain or tear down to build up. But by challenging um, our systems, our cardiorespiratory system and our muscles, the sweat equates to being at the right level of intensity for stamina uh, to make good things happen. And so uh, kind of in a uh, three-level uh, model, uh, if we spend most of our time, perhaps up to 80% of our time, moving at a pace uh, where we can be conversational, you know, how about those damn Yankees or what's this crazy pandemic, uh, as you're moving, that's at the right intensity to help your system build capillaries, to help your cells build more mitochondria, those little powerhouses, uh, and to, um, uh, and to uh, build capacity. Uh, we, we should spend most of our time in a low intensity zone where we can be conversant. Now, to get a little technical, and it's in, it's in the book, but it's uh, pretty well documented that that equates to about two thirds of your maximum heart rate. So, uh, and there's there's equations in the book to kind of guesstimate your uh, where your training zone is for most of your work to uh, build stamina for staying alive. Uh, in my case, um, I'm, I'm blessed to have a maximum heart rate of about 180. So when I do most of my work, rowing, uh, heavy yard work, uh, playing with the grandkids, if I keep my heart rate below 120 for 30 minutes. I know I'm sweating or the ladies would be glistening, but that is in the right zone to build capacity. Um, so that's zone one, that's uh, two thirds of max heart rate, measured heart rate, and that's conversational. So important to invest the time in that low intensity zone to build capacity for staying alive. There is a second zone, which feels really good. Your heart rate gets higher, perhaps up to 85% of your max, 80 to 85% of your maximum heart rate. And if you can maintain, you know, it depends on your, your level of fitness entering in as a, as a 40 plus fitness person or as a kaboomer, uh, you can, uh, it feels really, really good, but you can't sustain it for, for as long as you would for the zone I mentioned previously, the staying alive conversational range. Once in a while, when your doctor gives you the okay, again, I'm Medicare age, and we strongly encourage everyone over the age of 60 to get a physical aptitude readiness question signed uh, by your medical professional so that you, be a he or she, you are approved to raise your heart rate, episodically raise your blood pressure, and move. Uh, and um, there is that third zone, which I kind of call red zone, or you can call it a sprinting zone, where you get up to about 90, 95% of your maximum heart rate. You don't do it very long. You don't do it very often. There's a quote in the book, a legendary doctor, I believe he's now at um, university, no, he's at the Mayo Clinic, uh, Dr. Joyner. He has a haiku that talks about stamina. Uh, Run a lot of miles, some faster than race pace, and rest a lot, or words to that effect. And that is so true for uh, staying alive and building endurance. Uh, it's, it's the bedrock in, in uh, the models that you describe, the model that I talk about in the seven S's. Uh, if we don't have a bedrock foundation of stamina, uh, we're probably not going to blow out those 90 candles very well. Yeah, the, the way I like to think about it in terms of, of just, uh, I do like to think of it in terms of uh, exertion. Because it's hard, you know, you can stop and you can check your heart rate every once in a while if you, if you choose to, uh, but then you've stopped. And so a lot of times what I like to just say, okay, if, if generally... Uh, you're walking, let's say you're walking with one of your best friends uh, and you guys go out and you're going to do either a walk or a run, depending on your on your fitness level. At, at the level you're talking about, you're right at that edge where you can have a full sentence of five or more words and not have a problem talking. Uh, 
once you get to a point where you're talking in, in three or four word bursts, uh, now you're getting into that zone two. And it's okay to be in the zone two for a while, but you're just not going to be able to hold that out for too, too long. But it's, it's okay to be there every once in a while. Uh, just recognize when you're in there and realize that you know probably not going to be able to keep it up. Uh, and that might end your walk or your run earlier than you'd like. So slowing down a little bit, and getting back into zone one would allow you to keep going. Um, and then that zone three is the point where you see when you wouldn't even consider talking. Uh, this is where, like you said, maybe it's the shark and you're in the shallow water. Uh, you grab up the grandchild, you start running. You're not trying to stay in zone one uh, at that point. You're trying to get the heck out of the water. Uh, so you're probably going at zone two uh, from a heart rate perspective. But it's, it, you can perceive that exertion uh, pretty easily if you pay attention to your body uh, is what I found. You know, uh, absolutely, uh, my, my sentiment and my experience as well, Alan, is uh, that feedback loop and listening to your body, uh, perceived exception or perceived exertion, uh, it can do it. I think, well, it's my conviction, and I would ask you if it's uh, your sense as well. Uh, you don't have to get overly crazy with uh, appliances like smart watches, fitness watches, or, or other things that our, our body, if we listen to it, is a wonderful feedback mechanism to help us build that bedrock of stamina. Yeah. Some, somehow we live for tens of thousands of years without an Apple watch. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, <laughs> This episode of the 40 plus fitness podcast is sponsored by Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers to celebrity memoirs, news, business, history, fiction, and of course, health and fitness. In fact, our guest, Dr. Skillicorn's audiobook, Healing Depression Without Medication, is available on Audible. The Audible app is completely free to download and use on Apple or Android devices. Have a smartphone and a tablet and like to switch between the two? No worries. The Audible app lets you pick right up where you left off. I find their app to be better and easier to use than any podcast app out there. By the way, they're also producing podcasts. I love Audible because it lets me get out and about and enjoy wonderful audiobooks. When I want to go on a long walk, I'll pick up something in my library based on my mood, fiction or nonfiction, and hit the road. Power user tip. I put it on 1.5 times speed as I've found when the narrator is talking faster, I walk faster. I love having Audible as my walking companion. Audible is offering you a free trial at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash audible. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E. You're listening to a podcast, so I know you understand the value of on-demand audio content. In my opinion, Audible is the best at that. Get your free trial at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash audible. The other one, other one of your seven that I really want to get into today is strength. This is this is one of my favorites, and and I think it's one of those concepts that um, it's it's hard for some people to wrap their head around because uh, there's such a culture in this in this world now of being thin, uh, you know, uh, being you know light, uh, not weighing a lot, uh, having this look, and that look typically. Has them concerned that if they if they do build strength, they're just going to become these big hulking monsters, uh, and they don't want to look like that. So, uh, but strength is so important, and it's really hard to get people to to recognize that they need to do this. Would you go through some facts to help us understand why strength is so important? I'm sure, and again, I'm not a, a strength expert. I'm not a kinesiologist, uh, but I am a, a boomer, uh, blessed to have a fair amount of skeletal muscle. Um, some of its nature, some of its nurture, uh, but studies, and uh, it's very valid. I think most of us that have reached Medicare age know that our, uh, what we call, we used to call the neck to butt ratio, and now it's a formal name of waist to hip ratio, uh, can change. Uh, statistics are that starting at the age of about 30, you may lose uh, almost a percent of your skeletal muscle per year with a terrible sounding word, a uh, symptom called sarcopenia, loss of flesh or muscle. Um, and uh, if we don't uh, work to uh, slow that down or arrest it, uh, we will become uh, shrunken over and we can joke. Uh, folks my age remember Laughing and Artie Johnson uh, was a character on Laughing who was shrunken over and always playing the kind of the uh, wheezy uh, couch potato. 
Um, and I don't want to be that. And the way to avoid doing that is to challenge your muscles. Um, it, resistance exercise, and we can talk about the variations of that, just like you mentioned for exertion with uh, the stamina bedrock. But the foundational strength that people can work on, no matter, uh, I've never seen a study that said, no matter what your physical or uh, special condition is, uh, be it cer uh, cerebral palsy or multiple sclerosis or uh, uh, type 2 diabetes, I have never, there may be one or two, but I have never seen a study that said that uh, resistance exercise uh, was counterindicated. It is so good for offsetting the loss of flesh so that we can stay upright. Uh, we all kind of know those uh, older people who have to use a walker uh, because they can't stand up straight. Uh, and that's not good. Uh, they've let their big muscles and their supporting muscles uh, atrophy, if you will. And um, that that terrible sounding word, I'm glad it's a terrible sounding word. If more people heard sarcopenia, maybe they would uh, uh, pick up that 10 uh, pound bag of rice and uh, and uh, move some metal and do some things like that. And it, and it goes actually goes beyond sarcopenia because there's a related uh, villain in this story uh, called ostopenia. Uh, which is about the weakening or, or loss of density in your bones. And uh, strength training actually helps you fight both of those. It uh, sure does. And of course, the, uh, we encourage uh, the ladies, the, the half of boomers and those striving to be well past 40, uh, 40 plus fitness, uh, they have to uh, uh, experience the gentle. This gets back to stamina. As you shared, the interrelated um, factors are so true. Ladies have to work on their bone density. They do not want a broken, broken hip or a broken ankle, uh, broken wrist, uh, because their calcium uh, is out of whack because they haven't uh, done resistance training. So you're, it's so true that we were born to move. We were born to uh, push others around <laughs> uh, and, uh, and move stuff. And, uh, and move to sweat. Again, back to the interrelation. Moving heavy stuff as heavy as you can per doctor's uh, directives and your trainer, if you have a trainer, it is so important. Uh, for those of us my age in, in the 65 plus age category, we generally recommend if you work all the major muscles of your body just to do it twice a week. Uh, we recover a little bit slower than you folks that uh, are not boomer aged. So we do advocate uh, uh, religiously doing moving heavy stuff as heavy as you can uh, twice a week. Um, maybe some can get away with three times a week. I personally do it twice a week. Uh, and I mix it up. There's four times of uh, types of lifting. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the Supreme Court Justice, is 80 plus. She's a cancer survivor. She lifts weights. Um, there are power lifters who can generate extraordinary power meaning uh, lifting heavy weights uh, very quickly. And that's, uh, that's a, a powerful thing. Uh, or you could think of uh, the football player, J.J. Watt, who is, it's published that he was able to do a box jump of 57 inches. Uh, and that's explosive strength. Uh, and then there's endured strength. The farmers, uh, a farmer that uh, has a long day in the fields is probably a pretty fit guy or she, he or she is a pretty fit guy because they move heavy bales of hay or, or things like that. So one of the great functional exercises that we advocate for people my age is a farmer's walk. Uh, grab some heavy things in each hand and walk. Uh, functional exercise for people our age is really, really important. So endured, explosive, I'm drawing a blank on the other. Yeah, the functional. Straight, but. Yeah, I, I, I really, I'm really keen on, on the functional because when we start thinking about you know, real life, for example, okay, so your, your grandchild comes running up to you, and the first thing you want to do is, is grab that grandchild and, and swing them up into you know, your lap. You want to bring them up to you and, and lift them. Well, you know, if you don't have the strength to do that, uh, then you know, that's, that's where you are. You're not as close. You're not having that, that opportunity that, to be with your, your grandchild the way you want to. Uh, so something as simple as learning how to do a good deadlift and learning how to do maybe a kettlebell swing or two functional exercises to help you be in the strength mode to be able to, to do something like that. And, and you mentioned farmer's lifts, uh, farmer's carries. Um, you know, grip strength is so, so important. You mentioned it in the book, uh, but I always tell people, you know, we, we're not just doing this to live longer, as you mentioned earlier. We're doing this to live better. Um, and the first time you get a jar of something, you're trying to make dinner, 
uh, and you can't open that jar, you've lost some independence. And that's the first signal, you know, like you talked about the walker, but, you know, just not even being able to open a jar and hopefully someone else in the house is there that can open that jar for you. Otherwise you do without, uh, or then you start implementing tools like the walker. Now you've got this little jar opener thing, uh, to help you open jars, but now you don't open jars. So you don't have the grip strength to open jars. Uh, but you're losing your independence. You can either lose it to a tool or you can lose it to a person. Uh, but uh, you know, Strength is such an important part of keeping the lifestyle that we want to have. Boy, how true. And um, activities of daily life. I mean, we, we talk about it so often in your profession, in my profession, working with others and helping them live longer and live better. But um, if and when we can ever travel again, are you going to, would you want to be that person that says, would you lift my carry on up into the overhead bin because I can't? Or would you be the one who grabs a couple for other people and tosses them into the overhead bin? Um, it's, it's, you know, humbly being strong is not an apology. Uh, there is a phrase that I'm, I'm sure many of your listeners have heard strong is a new skinny boy. I believe it. Um, you know, the days of Twiggy are over the, uh, the days of, uh, being able to, uh, handle the activities of daily life are, are, um, so important. They are for me. Grandkids are getting heavier, you know, and I, I want to be able to, uh, um, try to stay as young with them as I can for as long as I can. Yeah. You, you can ask my wife. One of, one of the only reasons she keeps me around is I can, I can lift heavy things. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm good at carrying heavy things around. Put, put this over there, lift that, put that over there. Okay. Got that. Um, anyway, I'm really good at that, but, uh, and, and a few other things, but, uh, that's, that's the big one I, I put my hat on. By the way, that little uh, mentioning your uh, the interrelated um, aspect of this wellness that you've uh, cited a couple times, Alan, uh, humor is a big part of it, isn't it? You know, it, yeah. uh, you know, the well, fact that, uh, you know, your wife and you uh, figure out how to get things heavy lifted and have a chuckle. Uh, chuckles good exercise and it's certainly good medicine. We sort of know that, but do we really laugh as much as we should? And well, the it, it, it goes into, not. it goes into your others into one of your s's and it's the stress you know uh you can't be laughing and be stressed at the same time at least not a good belly laugh happy for that moment in time you found joy uh and you let that stress go which is, is hugely valuable for our well-being so uh, i agree with you yeah having having some fun uh is all part of this and uh you know i'm, I'm looking for that every every moment i can get uh as we go. Good for you. That's, that's the cool part of that. But um, I wanted to talk about, you know, someone, someone's considering going into train and they've never trained before uh, or they have trained, but you know, it's the, it's the, uh, it was the Jane Fonda videos for a while. And then they went with Kalad when he was on ESPN and then, uh, you know, they picked up with, with, you know, something else. And now, you know, most recently, maybe they did a little bit of uh, the body pump or less miles. Uh, video stuff, uh, but they really haven't gotten into uh, what we would call core resistance training, strength training. So if someone's going to go in and they, they they sign up at a gym, be it a you know a big box gym uh, or a small uh, gym in their neighborhood. Uh, what are some of the things they need to do to be safe when they're lifting? Uh, yeah, safety first, uh, but almost number one is not to be psyched out by a big box gym where there may be younger, fitter maybe more grunting specimens that are uh, seemingly doing amazing things on isolated lifts. Uh, for folks my age, uh, it's for folks of all ages, but as we get older, I advocate it is so important to work uh, multiple muscle groups and, and do complex exercises and freestanding weights. Don't have to be heavy, but uh, getting away from the crutches of fixed machines, there is a, there is a place for those, uh, you know, those open uh, cycle exercises uh, but I'm much more an advocate of, of uh, complex exercises where you use major muscle groups, perhaps a lunge. Again, if your doctor improves, uh, you safely do lunges and maybe some uh, transverse work with a twisting and an overhead lift. You're, you're working your body in three planes. Uh, you're working on strength, stability, and stretching all in the same routine. It does not take a lot of time, and you'll be a better boomer. Uh, by doing that. So uh, safety first, uh, if you can afford a trainer, uh, I would advocate everybody see if a trainer adds value to your journey. 
uh, for this physical 401k. You may be able to do it on your own, but uh, please don't be psyched out if you're in the presence of others. Do your own thing, zone out, uh, and um, uh, meet your goals. Have a plan going in for safety. Uh, know the proper routines to lift. Uh, the, there are uh, your certifying body, NASM, and my certifying body, NFPT, the National Federation of Professional Trainers uh, outline the protocols for how to lift safety uh, safely so that we are able to um, uh, get our work in and not be injured. So uh, yeah, safety first, uh, starting with your doctor's approval to go into the gym in the first place, but then uh, having a protocol, having a plan, uh, use a trainer it, or try a trainer if you think that it might add value, uh, at least until you get going on your own, and then enjoy the journey. Um, uh, motion is medicine. Uh, we do have a phrase, exercise over drugs. Uh, as you mentioned, there are so many interrelated factors uh, that, uh, that relate. Uh, resistance training leads to better diet, bone density, uh, insulin sensitivity, uh, better sleep. Uh, you look better in the mirror. You know, we joke uh, that uh, uh, mirrors, Lululemon leotards, and little kids and drunks don't lie. Um, they, they will let a boomer know if he or she doesn't look fit, you know, so, <laughs> uh, does the mirror lie? No, it doesn't. So, uh, resisting training helps you be proud of what you see in the mirror. Uh, it takes a while. Uh, you safely lift for a couple of times a week for a period of eight weeks. I almost guarantee you, you will see a difference and you will be proud of that difference. So it's a journey. Uh, it's going to be a safe one. Like you, uh, asked at the, uh, the get go there for, uh, strength training. Um, but complex exercises done safely, done um, in the right um, uh, motions, the protocols of proper lifting, and you'll um, you'll be a kaboomer. Yeah, you know one of the one of the cores that I want to put out there uh, before we sign off on this topic is, you know, when you're when you're learning a strength exercise, uh, don't immediately think that you're just going to jump into adding a load, adding weight onto what you're doing. Uh, you really need to learn the routine, learn the exercise well uh, to know that your form's uh, good. And so sometimes I get strange looks. Um, I'll be in the gym and all I have is a little PVC pipe. Um, and I'm trying to learn a movement. I'm trying to make sure that I perfect it before I put any load at all on myself. Uh, and they look at me and say, well, you know, obviously you could lift that. And I'm like, yeah, I could lift that, but I'm not, I'm not going to lift that until I know that I can get this lift functionally right. Uh, and once I get my form right, then I start what I call gentle nudging, uh, which is putting a little bit of resistance on top of that, making sure I keep that form, uh, and then slowly progressing from there. Uh, you know, if you, if you push your body too fast, uh, it will break, uh, particularly when you're over 40 or over 60. Uh, your body will break if you're, if you're not taking care of it and getting good form when you're doing these movements. So that's one of the core. And, uh, you know, as, as you mentioned, Dave, I think it's important for us to consider, you know, is a personal trainer good for us? And I'd say for most beginners, absolutely having a trainer there to teach you that form, you know, that they give you a customized workout that's specifically for you to give you what you want, um, what you know you need, going through those and, and learning the form well from a, a well-qualified personal trainer is going to go a long way towards helping you avoid these injuries. So uh, do consider that investment. It's, it's an investment that'll keep you in the gym. Uh, it'll, it'll be an investment that'll keep you from hurting. And it'll be an investment that'll get you stronger, faster, uh, because you'll learn the movement well, and then the movement will actually do what it's supposed to do when you add weight to it. And then maybe a little bit of the social uh, interaction there as well. Um, studies show, and you and I uh, both know that lots of times it helps to have a workout buddy, uh, whether that buddy is a trainer or uh, a friend of yours, could be a, a sibling, could be um, somebody from your family. Sometimes uh, working out together is a great way to inspire and to keep moving because everyone has a day when, uh, I don't feel like it today. Well, you know, <laughs> making that first step is important and making that fa safe step, as you mentioned. And uh, a trainer, I believe, can also help with that fascinating mind-body alignment uh, those that are in the zone lift more effectively, uh, recruit more muscles. It's not always the biggest athlete that does amazing things. It's the one that has that great alignment, uh, communicates, uh, 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 recruits more muscles to do the lifts. 
And, um, and um, that's what it's about. I mean, at my age, we're not going to build, as you mentioned, back to, you know, Jane Fonda and, and Skinny and so on. At our age, if you're natural, it is very, very, very hard to build mass. Uh, however, what we're looking for is to offset the loss of mass, that sarcopenia thing, and then the loss of bone density also. So this is this is important stuff, and I hope that uh, you know the words that you're putting out uh, get people's um, uh, get people's attention, and they learn how to move stuff and enjoy it. Yeah. So my my trainer when I was I was living in Louisiana, my trainer's name was also David, uh, and so David uh, made the mistake one one time of. Uh, needing to reschedule me. He said, you know, I've got someone that wants to train during this time for a competition. Would you be willing to move? And I said, okay, well, what do you want to do here? He said, five o'clock. And he said it before he actually realized what came out of his mouth. And I'm like, done. Uh, so yeah, every day, three days a week, uh, I was I was there uh, with David uh, at five o'clock. Uh, when he showed up at five o'clock, I already had the bars loaded. I'd already warmed up, ready to go. So I hope that I was one of his favorite uh, clients, although I, if he was telling me to do something and he was wrong, I, I didn't mind telling him. Uh, so maybe I wasn't. But uh, you're right. Having having a trainer, knowing that trainer's there, knowing you're paying that trainer, uh, you've got that investment, you're, you're in it. Uh, and then just like I said, having someone there that's going to advise you, uh, we're learning together. In my case, David and I were learning together because we're both, you know, both really into this. Uh, and eventually you might be too. So uh, just recognize that you're starting out. It's good to have a coach uh, that'll get you that, that ground faster, uh, help you feel more comfortable uh, and get you more engaged uh, and just having a lot more fun because uh, you become friends with your trainers for sure. Oh, and, and accountability. There is, uh, uh, I've had some world-class rowers and that's a favorite passion of mine is the sport of rowing or crew. Uh, I've had some wonderful rowers say, if it's worth doing, it's worth having a coach tell you uh, the little things that you can do better. Not yeah. that you're doing things wrong, but the little things that you can do better. There's the safety issue, but there's the performance issue too. And uh, again, uh, some people may not need it. Some people can find YouTube or Dr. Google uh, to find the resources they need to build the plan. But how important, as you know, and I know, how important is it to have that plan, uh, plan the execution and execute the plan regularly, build those habits uh, so you can look in the mirror and say, wow, who is that guy or gal? So <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah. When you talked about rowing in your, in the book, I was like, man, I miss my rower. I'm, I'm almost, I'm almost convinced I just need to go ahead and buy another, uh, another rower and have it shipped here to, uh, Panama. So I'll, I'll have one, but, uh, I'm trying to push off on that, but <laughs> we'll see. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, back to the, the bedrock part of it. Uh, when we are building capacity, it does not matter the type of uh, activity that you do. As long as, as you shared, you can uh, have those sentences, hopefully with a buddy or talking to yourself or talking back to the uh, podcast you're listening to. Um, but um, as you, if you are, um, I kind of triage things. I, I have three levels of uh, fitness I talk about for both stamina and strength. And one is decent. One is good enough and one is extra. There are some people that are very competitive, want to strive for excellence. And, 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 and by doing that, generally, you have a specific exercise. It just so happens that my exercise, uh, my lifelong passion is the sport of rowing uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, perseverance, alchemy. Uh, some, of, some folks may have read uh, Boys in the Boat. It's a tremendous story about uh, those types of things, teamwork, perseverance, alchemy, uh, beating Hitler's youth in the 36 Olympics and eight, eight years later beating Hitler's youth on the battlefields of Europe. Uh, but it's it's a it's a special thing to me, and why it's special is because it's a whole body sport. I mentioned earlier how important it was to when you can combine things like uh, strength, stability, stamina, and stretching, and the sport of rowing is uh, does that. And by the way, it's the most intense Olympic sport for kilocalories burned per minute of the event. So uh, I'm a nut about it, but um, hey, I'll uh, I'll go offline and and talk to you about uh, <laughs> getting that rower in your uh, <laughs> in your place. It'd be Absolutely. good to have. Yes. Frustrating. Yes. Dave, I define wellness as being the healthiest, fittest, and happiest you can be. What are three strategies or tactics to get and stay well? Three strategies to uh, live up to that um, um, uh, so important uh, definition that you just mentioned, that kind of integrative or holistic view of wellness. One, get started. Two, say and, not but. 
I, you know, we've all heard it. You've heard it. I've heard it. And perhaps I'm guilty of it more than I should be about. Yes, but, you know, I'm sore today. I shouldn't work out. So have a plan. Say yes and instead of yes, but. And then uh, celebrate the journey. Uh, please know that there is no Madison Avenue uh, uh, fountain of youth uh, that you, you know, take a potent potion, take a pill uh, to build your wellness. It is a journey. It is earned. And um, I, I talk about this. Um, if uh, Boomers are very interested in their retirement, uh, whether it's fixed or uh, variable income. Uh, but those seven S's, Alan, that you brought up earlier, to me, that is a phys physical with a P, physical 401k account, the strength, stability, stamina, stretching, restore to sleep, don't stress, and uh, clean eating. That's a physical 401k. That's an investment. That's one you have a plan, and that's one where you, you have workarounds, the yes ands instead of the yes buts. So the three that I would suggest from Dave Frost's boomer point of view, have a plan, say yes and, uh, and then uh, know it's a journey, it's an investment, and you'll be far better uh, to live longer and live better. Yeah, Three that's past a, 90. Yeah, and, that, and that's a hard ROI to uh, argue with. Uh, so uh, no David, argument, simple yet hard. <laughs> you bet. So, so David, if uh, someone wanted to get in touch with you, uh, learn more about you, learn more about the book, Kaboomer, Thriving and Striving into Your 90s, where would you like for me to send them? Oh, thanks, Alan. Um, the, the book uh, was uh, released in the merry month of June. Hopefully, it'll be a merry month of June by the time it ends uh, with this craziness going on around us. Uh, but it is uh, the book is available on Amazon in all um, and uh, in paperback and in uh, Kindle or ebook uh, versions right now. The audiobook will be available next month. Uh, you could always reach out to me, wellpast40.com. Uh, and uh, there's a, a, a Kaboomer page on that website. Uh, but thanks. Uh, if, I'd love people to um, be as excited about wellness as you are, and hopefully I am. And I would love other people to join the movement, maybe reducing the, the systematic health care costs of society uh, for Medicare. And, uh, you know, we can play with the grandkids and get those uh, carry-on bags lifted if and when we can ever travel again. So wellpass40.com. Okay. You can go to 40 plus fitness podcast.com forward slash four, four, three, and I'll be sure to have links there. So David, thank you for being a part of 40 plus fitness. Well, Alan, thank you for uh, the chance to uh, chat about something that's near and dear to both of us. Those simple yet hard steps to uh, gain stamina 90. That's a term we use. And, it, and some may say that's cute, but the, if you think about stamina 90, uh, having the stamina to blow out 90 candles, that appeals to me. So thank you so much for the chance to chat. Now, before you get out of here, don't forget to go check out the Lose a Size Challenge. Go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash lose and learn how you can lose a size in 30 days, guaranteed. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Dr. Jim Taylor and discuss his book, How to Survive and Thrive When Bad Things Happen, Nine Steps to Cultivating an Opportunity Mindset in a Crisis. Until then, have a happy and healthy week.